Hello there, Star Wars fans. Today I'm going to take you through a story where Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader go through their full power, basically, to take down an impossible nest of lilacs. Basically, this should be impossible. But, of course, the two most powerful beings in the galaxy are able to take them down. So, we're going to go through that story from Star Wars Lords of the Sith. And, as I'm going to say with every video this week, I'm on vacation. And I still, I mean, I was able to record videos for every day that I'll be on vacation. Unless I miss a day, in which case, I was unable to. Basically, I have no idea, but this was scheduled about five days ago. So, I hope you enjoy the video. I'll try to get back to your comments. Basically, why I'm letting you know I'm on vacation is because I might not be able to get back to your comments. But either way, I hope you enjoy this video. I'm trying to keep the daily uploads going, trying to stay consistent for you. 3,000 subscribers, awesome. You guys are the best. All right, let's get into it. Enough delaying, right? But before we begin, a little more delaying. What is a lilac? Sounds like a flower. No, lilacs were actually horribly terrifying. Tall beasts protected by a thick exoskeleton and armed with sharp, spear-footed limbs, powerful jaws, overpowering tentacles. Few creatures were able to survive on this arid surface of Ryloth, but the lilacs were aggressive, deadly, preyed on each other when no other food source was available. Basically, they were great survivors, known to crawl deeply into the inhabited caves and threaten city dwellers occasionally. They inhabited caverns, underground cities, and were protected by blast doors and traps to prevent lilac attacks. In addition to their viciousness and strength, the lilac's tall tentacle was also tipped with a poisonous barb. The poison itself was not deadly, but it was disabling enough to prevent most creatures from escaping. And in this scenario we're going to go over, Vader and the Emperor, along with royal guards, were chased into a cave where all of these creatures lived. Killing one was a challenge for most, but the Sith destroyed the entire cave, hundreds of them. And the description of it all is just insanely fun, so... Listen now to the end, as the Emperor explains a lesson to Vader at the end of the passage, but the first long bit of it is their combined powers to take out the Queen and the hundreds of lilacs. So, sit down, stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy this video. The Emperor looked at Vader, the two of them now in the cave surrounded by lilacs looking at the Queen. Shall we begin, Lord Vader? he asked. Vader answered only with the sound of his breathing. And the queen exploded into motion, and so, too, did Vader and the Emperor. A tentacle lashed at Vader, and he leapt over it, sidestepping a second tentacle, chopped it down with its blade. He missed as the queen snapped the tentacle back, his blade putting a charred furrow in the stone of the floor. He leapt high over her, flipping at the apex of his trajectory, and as he descended, he took his blade in a two-handed grip, pointing it downward to impale her. She lurched sideways and lashed out with a tentacle, which struck him squarely and knocked him to the floor. She turned as though to advance on him, but his master sprang before her, jumping, twirling, and ducking under the rapid swings of her tentacles and the spikes of her legs. His lightsaber slashed rapidly at every opening, striking the tentacles but scarring them only, not severing them. The queen lunged toward his master, and he flipped backwards, landing a few paces away. Vader jumped to his feet spinning out of the way of her attempt to stab him with the spike at the end of one of her tentacles. He found himself face to face with five lilacs now, all of them hissing, tentacles squirming. He stabbed one through the head, he backflipped high over another, hit the ground and severed its rear legs. To his right, his master, master gestured and with the force lifted two of the lilacs from the floor. Vader and his master exchanged no words, but each knew precisely what the other intended. With a casual throwing motion, the Emperor flung two lilacs in Vader's direction, their legs, tentacles squirming, bellies exposed, and now slashing and turning a rapid spin, Vader bisected both of them. The four gory pieces that remained fell to the floor in a heap. From above, blaster shots slammed into the lilac that remained before him, with several, several shots bouncing off its carcass before one finally caught it in the head and put it down. Vader glanced up to see Deez, the royal guard, kneeling in the tunnel's mouth, blaster rifle lowered, firing down into the melee. Vader reflexively slashed with his lightsaber as another lilac scrabbled towards him. The blade took off the legs and left the creature squealing and spasming. 
He saw his master dodging the rapid, repeated strikes of the queen's tentacles. The emperor twisted and spun and leapt, slashing with his lightsaber, wherever he could, and where the blade bit into the thick tentacles, it opened black gashes that leaked a thick oil. The pain seemed only to make her angrier. Vader leapt high and landed at his master's side. The queen roared and loosed a furry of strikes. Working in tandem, the, they parried her blows, counterstruck, opened dozens of holes in her tentacles, their blades spinning blurs before them. Her very bulk slowly pushed them backwards, and from time to time, they had to turn their attention to a lilac that rushed them or tried to jump them from the side. Moving almost as one, the two Sith Lords turned and spun around, an unspoken central point, parrying, slashing, killing. Frustrated, the Queen rushed towards them with surprising speed. Her huge body slammed into them both, knocking them backwards. Quick as a lightning strike, she struck with snapping, snapping movements. The Emperor fell flat to the floor to avoid the bite, and she slammed her legs down at him like so many pikes. Each blow chipping at the stone of the floor, he rolled and spun underneath the mountain of her body. While Vader slashed at her tentacles, the ichor from her many wounds sprang in all directions. She was trying simply to smash his master with her mass, but Vader perceived her intent, raised a hand, held her up, and she was straining, grunting for the fraction of a moment that it took for his master to roll out from under her. And then they were at her again, their blades humming and cutting. She hissed, wounded tentacles flailing, legs stomping, and bounded backward in a crouch. Emperor! Deez shouted from above and fired at the queen as rapidly as he could pull the trigger. The shots bounced off her body and ricocheted wildly around the chamber. Vader used his lightsaber to deflect one into the face of a lilac near him, killing it. Beside him, his master split the head of a lilac that lunged at him. Vader decided to finish matters now. Master, he said, and nothing more. Go, the Emperor said. Vader sprinted forward and leapt high. The moment he reached the apex of his jump, his master seized him with the force and flung him the rest of the way, so he landed atop the queen's back. Immediately she buckled, tentacles flailing, and he drove his saber back down into her back. To his surprise, the blade only bit partially and then slipped to the side. She screamed and hissed with agony. He grasped it two-handed again, preparing another blow. But she reared up hard, bucking and flinging him to the floor. He landed near his master, who grabbed him by the arm and heaved him to his feet with uncanny strength. She whirled around at them, whipping her tentacles at Vader and his master, followed with a lunge forward and a vicious bite at Vader. They once again sidestepped her attacks, once more falling into their usual rhythm and cross-cut at her head with their lightsabers. Both blades struck home. The Emperor tore a large gash in the armored exoskeleton of her head, and Vader destroyed one eye. She shrieked, rearing backward, eye socket leaking gore, tentacles whipping wildly. Deez continued to pour down fire at her, but the shots appeared to do little or no harm. Still, the distress of the Queen drove the remaining lilacs into a frenzy, and they charged from all sides. Vader bounded backwards, leapt high on the wall, and hung with one hand from a narrow ledge, his boots planted on the stone. He'd assumed his master would do the same, but he hadn't. Instead, his master stood in the center of a crowd of creatures, spinning, whirling, slashing, killing. Dees diverted his fire from the wounded queen to the lilacs attacking the emperor, but the frantic motion of the combat prevented him from aiming accurately and his shots bounced off their bodies in all directions. The queen recovered enough to survey the scene, and her lone eye fell on Vader, perched as he was on the wall, seemingly vulnerable, and she lurched toward him, shrieking. She pushed through the lilacs around her, her tentacles squirming wildly, grasping for him. Her remaining good eye fixed on him as her mouth opened wide in a prolonged hiss, and below, an explosion of force lightning shredded a handful of lilacs, and left his master standing in the center of a circle of charred, dead creatures. He made eye contact with Vader, nodding, and Vader knew to hold his position as the queen closed. His master raised both hands and sent a storm of force lightning into the queen, 
enmeshing her in sizzling blue lines. She screamed and spasmed in agony, her body parting ways to reveal the rows of her teeth as the lightning tore at her body and the organs underneath, burning her inside and out. Vader acted quickly, drawing on the force. He leapt off the wall straight at her head, but despite her pain, she managed to snatch him out of midair with a tentacle, seizing him around the waist and squeezing. His armor cracked under the strain, and he shouted with pain, but as ever he let the pain draw him deeper into the force. She lifted him high, jerked him toward the slashed face and the ruins of her eye, her mouth opened wide to hiss, exactly as he'd anticipated. Finish her, his master shouted. He threw his lightsaber at her open mouth, guiding it with the force, causing it to spin as rapidly as a rotor as it flew into her gullet. She gagged, recoiled, one good eye wide with pain and confusion as Vader maintained his mental hold on his spinning blade, cutting her apart from inside out. Desperately, instinctively, she drove the spiked poison tip of another tentacle at his chest. Immersed in the force, though, he caught it, caught the spike in his gauntleted fist, and stopped it before it reached his armor. He grunted with pain. With exertion, the thick muscular appendage of the giant creature strained against the force-fueled strength. He was the stronger, and he stared into her face as his lightsaber tore through the innards and his master's lightning charred her flesh. She screamed again in a final burst of ang agony and the hulking remains of her body collapsed to the floor, taking Vader, clutched now in a limp tentacle with her. He hit the floor in a crouch, along with the bulk of her carcass, shook off the tentacle, and recalled his lightsaber to his hand. The blade cut through her carcass and returned to his hand, slick with fluid. The remaining lilacs shrieked and chittered, tentacles and legs jerking wildly. Dees continued to blast at them, Vader met the eyes of his master, standing five meters away and both nodded. Immersed in the force, they set about slaughtering the remaining lilacs. The lines on their lightsabers rose and fell, and the confused, stunned beasts barely defended themselves. Soon the floor was carpeted in carcasses, and Vader and his master were the only living things standing amid, amid it all. His master's cackle filled the silence. Both deactivated their blades. Well done, my friend, the Emperor said. Back up in the tunnel, Dees used the high tensile cable to get down to them. He was obviously trying and failing to control the expression of awe on his face until he stood before Vader and the Emperor. He took a knee, his fist to his chest. My Emperor. The Captain, Vader asked. Killed by one of the creatures, Lord Vader, Dees said as he stood. His body is not recoverable. To Vader, the Emperor's mind seemed to be elsewhere. He may have heard Dees, or not. Vader could not tell. I think we should leave this place before it starts to stink, the Emperor said finally. This is the way to the surface, I am quite sure. Together, Vader, the Emperor, and Dees moved quickly through the tunnels, ever upward back towards the surface. They stayed alert for lilacs, but the tunnels were empty. The entire nest must have been annihilated. The creatures struggled when the queen died. When the head is removed, the body must soon die, the emperor commented. Vader said nothing, merely looking at his master. Do you not see? That's why we're hunted, Lord Vader. The rebels hope to cut the head from the empire. Of course, Vader said. It was unlike his master to state something so obvious, except with a purpose. And? Vader asked. His master adorned his face with his usual half-smile. Many things are that way. Even some relationships. If the head is removed, the body cannot exist alone. The relationship is complementary, almost symbiotic. Vader understood his point then. Yes, master. That's where we're ending this story. Vader and the Emperor killed the nest of lilacs, killed the queen, and it took pretty much everything they had. And at the end of it, the Emperor gave Vader another lesson, saying, hey, you saw what happened when we killed the queen? All of the lilacs went running. They all didn't know what to do with themselves. Same thing with the Empire. If the Emperor and Vader die, the Empire will scatter and die. And then the Emperor said something to Vader, a lesson, 
that if the Emperor were to die, Vader too would end up being lost, running away to nothing. And Vader agreed. Vader knew deep down he did need the Emperor, but he also hated him. It's an extremely complicated relationship. The relationship of the Sith, truly. But let me know what you thought of all of this, and of course, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.